Yellowstone shocking updates, stories about measuring deformation in Yellowstone. Well, the recent work and news updates. September was a month of hydrothermal activity at Yellowstone. Steamboat geyser experienced water eruptions September 1st, 7th, 12th, 17th, 24th, and 30th, bringing the total of steamboat geyser eruptions in the year of over 21. In addition, a rare eruption of ear spring in the upper geyser basin, not from, far from Old Faithful, occurred on September 15 and was accompanied by changes to springs and geysers in the Geyser Hill area. This is, of course, because of the deformation. Something is happening underground. A new thermal feature also formed at that time nearby, spouting scalding water that necessitated the closure of the boardwalk through the area. Scientists from Yellowstone National Park deployed temperature sensors and cameras in the area in order to monitor the activity. And the University of Utah deployed 29 seismic sensors around the area to measure whether or not significant changes in the subsurface plumbing system occurred relative to data collected from the area from November of last year. This is a report from the USGS. Seismicity during September of 2018, the University of Utah seismograph stations responsible for operating and analysis of the Yellowstone seismic network located over 57 earthquakes in the Yellowstone National Park region. The largest event was a micro-earthquake of 2.9 magnitude Richter located about 16 miles east-southeast of Mammoth, Wyoming on September 11. No swarm activity occurred during the month of September. Yellowstone earthquake activity remains at background levels, they say. And there has been ground deformation. Surface ground deformation recorded by the GPS stations in Yellowstone showed little change over the month of September, reflecting low rates of ground motion in the region. Overall trends since 2015 are of uplift near the Norris Geyser Basin and subsidence of the caldera, all at rates of a few centimeters per year. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, provides long-term monitoring of volcanic and earthquake activity in the Yellowstone National Park region. Yellowstone is the site of the largest and most diverse collection of natural thermal features in the world, in the world, and the first national park, Wyoming Volcano Observatory, sorry, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory is one of the five USGS volcano observatories monitoring volcanoes within the United States for science and public safety. And as we know, Yellowstone is a super volcano. Now, recent works and news, a steamboat geyser and in the Norris geyser basin erupted more times in August. And seismicity during August located 102 earthquakes in the Yellowstone National Park region, the largest being a micro-earthquake of 2.5. And now going into the shocking stories, measuring deformation in Yellowstone. As we see, this is from USGS Volcano Hazards Program. Shocking stories about measuring deformation in Yellowstone. Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles, a weekly column written by scientists and collaborators of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. And as we said, it's a super volcano. It's also located on the Ring of Fire. This week's contribution is from Beth Bartel and Tim Dittman from UNAVCO Consortium in Boulder, Colorado. About 30 kilometers west of the Yellowstone National Park boundary in Idaho, UNAV co field engineer Tom Lyman surveys the damage at GPS station P361 on Sawtell Peak. This is a picture of it that we see. P361, Sawtell Peak. Electrical storms destroyed multiple antennas, including the GPS antenna here under a protective plastic dome, this thing here and three communication antennas on the tower. 
data from P361 along with data from other stations in Yellowstone region are sent to UNAVCO for free and open distribution. So maintaining instruments in Yellowstone requires constant sleuthing as well as resourcefulness, vast distance, limited access, harsh winter weather all pose particular challenges to keeping data flowing day after day, season after season, special state of health monitoring tools combined with prior knowledge helps engineers remotely diagnose any problems before they arrive on site to be as efficient as possible with limited resources. Lyman and others have been alerted when this sub-network of stations stopped transmitting data and unsuccessfully tried connecting to the stations from his office before he drove out from home northeast of the park. His remote diagnosis speculated there was likely a problem with the communication system, the GPS system that is, at the site. But was that the only problem and what happened? There are multiple points of failure at any remote geophysical instrument site. Multiple elements, instruments, cables, and connections allow a GPS signal to be received at a GPS antenna, transmitted to GPS receiver, and then transmitted via communications equipment to UNAVCO, each of which can and has failed. They've all failed. Stations have suffered from faulty equipment, power failure, snow damage, and other ailments. Snow is a particular problem in Yellowstone region and can damage the solar panels or the uh, ray domes protecting the high precision GPS antennas. The sites around Sawtell Peak, where Lyman stands in mid-July, failed earlier in the summer. And this is a field engineer, Dylan Kambalski, replaces damaged antennas on the communication towers at Sawtell Peak the tower is shared by multiple groups that use this region high point to relay data. So once on location, Lyman sees that not only has the internet connection to the outside world failed, but the radio antennas and the GPS antenna are damaged as well. In fact, most of the infrastructure of the site will have to be replaced. A few telltale signs point to the culprit. The area has been struck by lightning. Based on the damage, the strike must have been quite close, so everything was fried by the lightning, obviously. Grounding was not able to save the many antennas at the site from failure, although lightning protection prevention prevented the receiver from shorting out. Lyman determines that he will have to return to the site with other help, such as as much of the equipment that needs to be replaced is high on the communications tower. Every year, several GPS stations in the 1100 station plate boundary observatory of which the network at Yellowstone is part are damaged by lightning. Locations that are good for GPS stations have clear sky view. High points are especially attractive as they allow for easier data transfer, so it's no surprise that these stations are also in danger of being struck. P361 on Sawtell Peak is not even the only deformation station in the Yellowstone region to be affected by lightning, and the other stations did not fare so well. Parts of the borehole geophysics station B205 near Norris Geyser Basin were permanently damaged. Unlike GPS stations where equipment is above ground and relatively easy to replace, the borehole site suit of the instruments can reside in cured cement and it could be as deep as 700 feet below the surface. Can you imagine? At B205, only one of three instruments in the borehole, a tilt meter, was replaceable. So that means major work drilling into the cement 700 feet underground to replace them. While we work to prevent equipment failures for by foreseeing problems, hardening station hardware and learning from experience, we continue to be challenged by the elements and factors both foreseen and new. These challenges, however, are what keep the job interesting, and Yellowstone is never a bad place to visit regardless of the time of year. No kidding. 
Uh, of course it's interesting because this is a super volcano and there are many who think that it's about time it blows. Now, these challenges are, are what keep the job interesting. They say Yellowstone is never a bad place to visit all times during the year. These, uh, the data collected continuously allow us to better understand volcanoes' vast volcanic system and the pressures that cause the greatest hazard in the region, earthquakes, that is. By keeping the data flowing, lessons learned at Yellowstone, one of the best instrumented calderas in the world, can then be applied at other volcanoes around the globe. And I also want to stress to people that uh, the Long Valley volcano, which is also a super volcano in California, is the neighborhood of Yellowstone. So we've got two super volcanoes on the Ring of Fire right next to each other, located on the west coast of the United States. Uh, this is on USGS. I'll leave a link below for you for this.